Hello, and welcome to AI with AD. I'm really excited today because I have somebody else in the hot seat with me, and that is Sanket Atal. I'm really excited about asking Sanket to share some of his experiences from the exciting world of AI. So Sanket, uh, you're aware, you know, today AI is the flavor of the season. It's what every conversation is about. I'm told that uh, technology, which is such an empowering thing in its own way, that every single molecule of technology in the future will be built with atoms of AI. Now, if that is the case, tell me a little bit about what you are seeing the Indian startup community talking about. What are their ideas around this? Uh, what are young minds getting excited about? Or even maybe, you know, apprehensive about? Uh, how would you, uh, you know, uh, think about these conversations and what could you tell us about them? Absolutely. Um, first of all, it's great to be in the hot seat. Thank you so much, Aranzati. And uh, in my discussions around the industry, especially with startups, uh, the response has been super interesting. Everybody gets excited whenever the term AI is mentioned. And then they try to differentiate between predictive and generative and talk about what all they know with LLMs, etc. But then when it comes to brass tacks, they're quite weak. Uh, so people still in general are equating AI with a lot of gimmickry rather than practical usage. And, but slowly but gradually the discussion is shifting to what exactly is AI and how can we leverage it for the betterment of our customers, which is bringing in the whole concept of data as the new oil. Uh, and people are understanding that there is a need to consolidate data from the enterprise, have tools that enable you to do that so that you can have a foundational uh, data set that can then power whatever you'd like to do with AI. Uh, the big disillusionment came when people started playing with things like chat GPT and trying to come up with business relevant information. Now it's easy to write a poem with that, but it's very difficult to come up with an industry specific information uh, from a chat GPT response. And that led to the whole discussion of, well, how, how do we ground our prompts and how exactly do we uh, query in the right way? which led to the whole data discussion. So it's been very, very interesting. Um, and with this, people are also looking at what are the various use cases that can be there. So um, I was talking to one person who has a small company that helps other small companies have things like call center attendees, you know. And there's a tremendous fear that exists there that Gen AI is going to come in, and with this, there go our jobs. I tried to explain to him how fundamentally the whole goal behind AI is to create more efficiencies. So if you have 10 people doing uh, or servicing 100 customers, you should be able to service 1,000 customers with the same 10 people by leveraging AI. And uh, so with this, the discussion got onto uh, risks versus opportunities. Now, as you very well know, whenever a new technology has been introduced, there have been a lot of doomsday uh, predictions. My goodness, our jobs are going to end, the world as we know it is going to go away. But what I'm seeing now slowly trickle in is the practicality aspect of it. People are like, no, this is actually going to make our lives better, right? So instead of AI versus humans, we're talking more about AI powered humans. And hence that whole efficiency part is going to be uh, super critical. Um, there are lots of companies trying to come up with solutions on top of uh, uh, you know, our platform and other platforms. What I particularly like about the Salesforce approach and which has been received really well in every forum I've spoken to, is the contextual AI that we have. Meaning that when you're in a particular screen uh, with, with sales cloud or service cloud, we leverage AI, but we bring it to you rather than asking you to bring AI into the scene. Uh, so contextual information, whatever you're doing, how can that be enhanced with AI? And this is, a, I think, a very powerful message. So rather than every user, every person who's a startup founder or even a, you know, overall maybe a weekend technologist having to become an AI expert, what Salesforce is doing is bringing AI to them in the context that they already know and are aware of. And this is being really appreciated by everybody. Now, as you know, in the uh, startup community that we have, it's been going strong and it's like 280 plus startups now. More than 80 have declared themselves as AI startups. Wow, that's huge. It's, it's, it's very good to see. Um, and upon looking at it, I think 
around 30 to 40 of them are in more mature stages. The others are still trying to invent uh, themselves. A couple of examples I'll give you. Uh, this is a company called Zyme.ai. Now, you know, people are trying to figure out how best to use our products to improve productivity, improve the performance of various salespeople when they go talk to customers. And, uh, but it becomes a little bit difficult because you need to have the entire context of the customer which is available to you in your screen. So Zyme basically takes that and essentially produces a script for the uh, A's to go talk to the particular customer. So rather than trying to look up information in real time uh, when you're talking to the customer, you're following a script, creating a story and conveying the message in a very different manner. Uh, let's see where it happens, but it's, it's in the initial stages, but these folks are super interested in having a story on top of the fantastic Salesforce sales cloud story. Um, the other one is EZB. Outside of the US, most of the world is big on WhatsApp. A lot of communication happens on it, but unfortunately, the content of that communication is often lost. And uh, so the whole concept behind EZB is for uh, this WhatsApp information to be looked at, intelligence to be derived from it, and then entered into uh, the sales cloud as information that can be then leveraged later on. Uh, adding another data source, which allows you to leverage all communication mechanisms. So basically take the unstructured data that is there in these conversations and putting them into the right context in the database that we already have. Absolutely, absolutely. And with our data cloud, which handles structured and unstructured data, I think this becomes really, really powerful. This becomes a building block for amazing things on top. So a uh, lot of optimism, a lot of companies wanting to do a lot of things. Some of them are more of a platform play, saying, hey, look, we don't know exactly what the end customer wants as a product, but let us enable other technology companies to develop solutions, leveraging all of the uh, various tools available uh, that take you on the AI path. So that, uh, that's a company called Kiss.ai. And uh, again, it's a platform company. It's a very difficult proposition to put forth, but what my takeaway from all of this is, is that there is amazing amount of optimism, amazing amount of energy going into the AI space in India. And I personally feel that if we are to take a look at where AI will be and how AI will help us, I think it's going to help each and every one of us in a very profound manner. Uh, but of course, the big enabling factor will be, can solutions be created leveraging AI, which are in the vernacular, so the Aam Admi in the second and third tier cities is able to leverage it. That remains to be seen. But I think that will also happen. It's already happening, and I think the day is not far off when we are going to see a lot of other vernacular languages getting leveraged in order to be able to use AI. Thank you, Sankit. Thank you very much for being here in this conversation with me. Thank you so much, Arundhati. It was wonderful chatting with you.